Carol Eliasson. And I'm Myra Hummerson. And we're here to celebrate 25 years of Dreams Take Flight in Winnipeg. At the Royal Aviation Museum of Western Canada. So join us with our sponsors, volunteers, and friends that have been with us for 25 years with Dreams Take Flight. Dear friends of mine from Dream State Flight, Ben Watson, National Director for Dream State Flight, and retired Captain Bert Elam. Beth, would you tell me a little bit about the Dream State Flight and things about how this started? In 1989, a group of Air Can employees thought that they wanted to give back to the community. So they thought they'd take a group of children to uh, Toronto's Wonderland. And then they thought, well, we work for an airline. So let's ask them if we can borrow a plane. Now in those days, you didn't borrow planes, um, but they went to the President of Air Canada and they asked him and he said, sounds like a great idea. So they took 70 children down to, to Disney World in Florida. Um, they were the first chapter to do so. We now have eight chapters across Canada. We have uh, Halifax, Montreal, Toronto, Ottawa, Winnipeg, Calgary, Edmonton, and Vancouver. All chapters take children either to Disney World or Disneyland um, for a fun-filled day with children that would never get the chance to do so if it weren't for Dreams Take Flight. Can you tell me how day starts, just briefly about day? Well, in Winnipeg and in, in most chapters, uh, they meet at the airport at three in the morning. Um, they have to be there before three. Uh, the kids will change into their clothing. They're given shirts, t-shirts, and other stuff to wear. Um, and then they get into their groups and they wait for the word to go to the plane. Um, they go in groups. A lot of photographs are taken of the kids to, during the day and then they go and they get on the plane and three and a half, four hours later we're in Disney World. What is Air Canada involvement with all this? Can you the Air Canada Foundation are just wonderful. They provide the plane, they provide time off for meetings for um, the National Dreams Take Flight directors, um, they give generously uh, with passes to get kids uh, for fundraising, um, to get children to the departure cities because it's not just the main cities, it's all across Canada that these children come from. And this year alone, in, in 2017, we'll have taken 1,031 children to either Disneyland or, or California. Bert, would you tell me a bit about your involvement with Dreams and your first flight? I know you've been a, uh, you did do, do the flight, flying it down there as well as your uh, group leader. Can you give me some? your thoughts on it. Well about 15 years ago Myra you recruited me as a volunteer and little did I know at that time the involvement that I would have for the next uh, time uh, and I was very fortunate uh, our VP of flight operations um, Rob Jaguar at the time consented to having volunteers um, actually operate some of the flights prior to that it had been supervised real pilots and uh, so we put the request in for the um, volunteers and I was able to do one of the flights at the time. Uh, like the children it starts very very early in the morning about three o'clock with the flight planning. All of the departments in uh, Air Canada are very generous of their time and support in getting the flight airborne. Uh, the crew we meet, uh, the flight attendants and pilots to discuss the day ahead of us and then we proceed down through the departure area where we meet some of the children and that's for us is when the fun really starts because you can just the enthusiasm, the excitement, it just gets the crew going, the pilots going. We go up, uh, we board the airplane, it's unlike any other Air Canada flight, uh, again, just because of the enthusiasm, all of the fellow Air Canada volunteer employees, the excitement. Uh, we fly into um, uh, Disney World. Uh, Orlando has a very special procedure and arrival uh, into um, Disney where we can get to do a little bit of a circuit around Disney World and you can hear the children in the back even over the noise of the engines and that, uh, just how excited they are and the landing, the cheering, the excitement. For the crew it's, it's a phenomenal day, just a phenomenal day. 
Well, thank you, Bert, and thank you, Beth. Don't go away, we'll be back. I want to welcome Ron Brown from the Boys and Girls Club who brought with him today Cordell and Adora. Um, Ron, uh, being with the Boys and Girls Club, tell me what you, the association between Dreams and the Boys and Girls Club and what it's meant to the Boys and Girls Club. So Carol, one of the things that we really pride ourselves on is giving uh, young people experiences that they might not normally get. And Dreams Take Flight is absolutely one of those experiences. This is a, a partnership we've had since 2002, and uh, we've had 107 wow. uh, of our youth mm -hmm. take this flight. And without exception, they would say this is a very unique day and a great experience. Well, I'm so happy to hear that. And Cordell, tell me a few of your uh, memories from the flight. Well, Carol, some of the memories I have was I remember always waking up constantly in the night thinking they have forgot us there oh, at, no. the, uh, <laughs> at the place we had stayed before right, the flight. The hotel, but, right. Yeah. But uh, I remember taking the flight there, getting off the plane, super hot. But one of the most vivid memories I have was going up to one of the concession stands and ordering a poutine. But my brother coming up behind me, because he was with me there, and right. saying, Cordell, they don't know what poutine here is in America, because they're not that cool. <laughs> <laughs> and so that was one of the best, funniest memories I have. Oh, that's great. And um, were you tired on the flight coming back that night? I was definitely tired. I definitely remember sleeping through the flight. Right. Oh, that's great. And Adora, you just came with us in April. And how was that for you? Tell me what you thought of the flight. And um, So before I left, I couldn't sleep because I was too excited and when I'm excited for something I don't go to sleep and when I first went on the plane I was like very excited I made some new friends there and when we got, we got off the plane it was like really hot just hot it's very hot there. and then the, my first ride I went on was Space Mountain oh, wow. and it was really fast and yeah. I had like I was scared but then after it was just I was it was like, I wanted to go on it again. I know, all the kids do. Now, did you go on Splash Mountain? Yeah. I did, did you love Splash Mountain yeah, too? Yeah, it was, oh, that's a great really ride. Yeah. And then after I ate food, it was really good. And then one of my friends hurt her leg. Like, she had to go on a wheelchair. Oh, but then okay. We still had fun. Okay. And everything worked out all right. Yeah. Oh, well, that's great. And Cordell, now it's been quite a while for you. It has. Uh, yes, and I know you've got great memories. And now, now that you're older and you're finished school, what plans do you have? Well, one thing I wanted to do was join the RCMP. Okay. And so that would include going out of Winnipeg to a training camp and then training there and then hopefully getting to become a RCMP officer. Oh, that would be fabulous. It's yeah. really nice to hear stories from children that we've taken on the flight and, you know, to see what's happened to them. And it was a great experience. Oh, I'm so happy. And uh, Ron? Uh, anything else to add from, uh, I don't know, from, let's say from the kids after the flight. Do you hear a lot of feedback? Yeah, and yeah. I, I, it's funny, I think one of the privileges of my job is to hear these amazing stories, right? Yes. Like, like, uh, like our two youth here have, uh, have articulated. It, it is, yes. it's a very, very positive message to send, right? That, that every, everything that you can dream of, it's possible. It is. You yes. know, um, you know, the, the tagline, dreams take flight, it, it's for real, right? That, yes. that this is an experience they can have, um, you know, and in fact, I would say that on that day, they might be the most important youth on earth. It's just, it's just that unique well, an experience. And yes, and you know, when we bring the children on the aircraft, you guys are the most important to us. We, you're our guests for the day, and uh, you know, we just look after everybody, and we just love having you. And you know, my favorite part of Dreams Take Flight is getting to Disney World 
and seeing that castle. Did you guys love the castle? Yeah. And the oh, fireworks. And the fireworks. Well, thank you so much, Ron and Crudell and Andorra, for coming. It, it was just so lovely to talk to you. I'm here with Jim Kotowicz, one of uh, Dreams Take Flight's corporate sponsors, and with our doctor, Dr. Martin Vogel, uh, who has been with Dreams Take Flight for 25 years, and um, it, he's just been wonderful with us. So Martin, um, just tell me a little bit about uh, preparing for the children and how they're, you know, what they have to go through to actually get on the flight. Well, as I understand it, the children are initially selected as candidates by the various groups, whether it's um, boys and girls clubs or any other organizations. And they then have the treating doctors, the pediatricians and family doctors, complete a form which has a number of questions that we as the uh, flight physicians have to review. We're looking to see whether a child is strong enough, healthy enough to be able to survive a 24-hour trip mm -hmm. down to Disney World. And this uh, usually is preceded by a somewhat sleepless and excited night prior to the event, and then uh, a uh, very early arrival at the airport at 2 or 3 a.m., uh, leaving, flying down to Orlando, spending many, many hours in the park running around, and then flying back, uh, basically getting back to Winnipeg 23, 24 hours after they've started. So we need to make sure that these kids have the stamina. Uh, and also I need to know whether they have any medical conditions that would make it uh, either very difficult to be able to treat them while either in the aircraft or in the park. We also uh, uh, need to know just in terms of their safety and whether they have the ability to um, be able to look after their various medical needs, whether that's treatment with insulin or whether they have needed oxygen in the past or other things all of which can be affected as well by the flight environment. Mm -hmm. And you know, it is a long day. Um, so over the years, because I know we've both been there for 25 years, have you had a lot of medical... Uh, Incidents, incidents? Yes. yes. We've had all sorts of things, yes. uh, some quite trivial and some less yes. so. Uh, I mean, uh, we've, we've done all sorts of things, uh, whether it be uh, um, looking, well, one of the major things we deal with is the excitement and, and, and the, the anxiety that some yes. of the children have. Uh, we have a lot of children who become uh, nauseous, either because of the flight or because of the diet, which is a little bit different than yes, what they normally totally experience. Yes. So we go through a lot of uh, gravol, uh, Tylenol, uh, sometimes uh, just uh, tender loving care is yes. something that we uh, we need to give. But we've had more serious issues as well. Um, I remember one year when we had a child who uh, had just recently uh, recovered from a treatment for leukemia spike a fever on the flight coming back and we did have to uh, make sure that that child sought medical treatment at the children's hospital immediately upon landing. Um, and then we've had issues that weren't quite medical but came to us anyway, such as the, the little girl who, who broke her porcelain mickey and yes. wanted to see if we could fix you it. Could fix it yes. uh, at that time we didn't have the ability but since then we've brought crazy glue along <laughs> just in case that situation <laughs> comes up again. And Martin you're always so wonderful with the kids and every year he's got great hats he comes down with and you're, you're just great with, uh, with them on the flight. And uh, now uh, Jim you're our corporate sponsor and you've been on the flight how many times? I think it's four times. I think it is four yeah. times, actually. It's hard to count. I had so much fun, I don't I bother know. counting. So. Well, it's like a party up there, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It's really good. We have a good time um, with the kids. All of us do. Um, Jim, do you have anything that's, um, any stories that you could tell us about any special kids that, that you felt? Uh, you know, every, every trip has been fantastic. I was really 
there was a lot of trepidation when I was first invited to go. Yes. Um, I didn't mind being the corporate sponsor because it's just a matter of writing a check. Yes. But then one year I got a phone call from you guys and um, uh, I was really worried about going and I had the time of my life. It was the hardest thing I've ever done in terms of working because yes, I'm used to sitting hard. back in a chair and relaxing at work. Uh, but when it came to this, <laughs> when, it, when, it, when it came to this, I mean, uh, I, I was all I could muster to keep up with the kids, and it was fantastic. Yes. But the, the one story that sticks out actually has nothing to do with Dreams Take Flight on the flight or Disney. Okay. It was this summer, right after the Canada Summer Games. And what happened? I was wearing this shirt because I like this shirt. Yeah, you love it's that one of my shirt. favorite yes. shirts. I love that shirt. Um, too. So I, I, my wife and I went to the closing ceremonies. Yes. And I was walking towards our seats, and this gentleman came up to me, and he um, he suffers from Down syndrome. Yes. And he just stood right in front of me and stopped me and said, "You're with Dreams Take Flight." I went, "Well, yes, I I, I help out once in a while whenever they ask me." <laughs> yes. And he said, "I went on the 10th anniversary trip, and it was the greatest experience of my life." <laughs> That's quite a while And ago. he was. <laughs> He went on to tell me what it was like, and he went to Disney World, and I said, how many rides do you want on? Did you go on? Every single one of them. <laughs> oh, and, that's great. And it, I, when I was talking to him, I looked up, and I noticed his father was behind him, and he had this really funny look on his face. Um, uh -huh. And, and I, I stopped, and I said, excuse me, sir, I don't want to hurt your feelings. And he said, my son never talks to strangers. Oh. And I was so touched. That he, he has actually, a dream. Because yeah. of this, because of dreams take flight. Oh, so, yeah. It's well, a just, just wonderful experience. Well, thank you so much. Margaret from Rossburg House and two children that came on our flight. Sister Margaret, could you tell me a little bit about Rossburg House and involvement with the Dream State flight? How long you've been on flight? Sure, please. Uh, Rossburg House is an inner city drop-in center, um, an alternative for children and youth to the streets. And there are all kinds of different activities at Rossbrook. There's uh, sports activities, games, there's learning activities, there's food, um, there's dreams take flight, there are camps, there's a great variety of activities to keep, keep children and youth involved in positive activities and, and social activities with one another. And in the mid 80s, I think, we got involved with dreams take flight. Uh, we were called and asked if we would like to participate and it didn't take more than half a breath to say yes, we would love to be involved. And we've had 80 some kids go on the flight over the years. We have a cumulative list of everyone who's ever gone. Um, and nothing but admiration for this group and how they do what they do. Yes, they take the group to Disney and they provide a wonderful day, but they do it in such a spirit of fun and joy and sharing and it's just, every, everything is delightful. One year I was lucky enough to go and I had just a wonderful time and just, uh, I, I have just enormous respect for these people and what they do. Can you tell me how that affects the children like when they come on our flight and when they tell you about the day? starts with when they find out they're going to be on it. When they hear this year's list and they know they're going, I don't know, sometimes we tell them, sometimes the parents tell them, um, and then the anticipation starts. And, and from there it's just, you know, they're imagining, they're thinking, they're on the computers looking to see what they might do when they go there. And um, it's excitement, it's just exciting. And then, of course, the airport night is very exciting and I, I, I have never seen a group throw a party like this group does at the airport. It is so much fun. 
Tim, could you tell me a bit about your experience with dreams? You came with us a number of years back and you're adult now. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, I think it's been about over 10 years since I've been on the flight with, uh, with the group and it was a one in a lifetime experience. Like, um, I, I, still, I still dream of going on the flight and like I remember I couldn't sleep for like the whole day and, it, and it's it's a really long day fun filled and that's all I remember is fun and even getting back home can't sleep the day after running on adrenaline um, it's just it was just awesome to to be a part of something like this and Preston you came with us last year I believe right did you enjoy your day yeah what did you like the best? Um, Space Mountain. And what else did you like? Um, spending the money. I was spending the money. <laughs> well, what we do is, well, you know, we buy all the children, you know, something to bring back as a memory on that day. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you bought something when you yes, were Yes, you know, uh, there's a funny story about that. I uh, I got a necklace for one of the girls that came on the, on the, with our group. And uh, I, I, I told everyone it's just for my niece kind of thing, right? And, you know, but um, I just, I just spent the weekend with this girl like recently and we were just talking about like our, our time we had at, at Dreams Take Flight and it was really, it's really fun. Good memories lots of stuff and I still have my sunglasses and all this stuff that I got from that year when I went. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Well, thank you all for, for being here and telling us a bit about the, you know, your experience and don't go away. We'll be back to say our goodbyes. <laughs>